yes, I will talk about a product uh, which we have developed, let's say, six years ago. Uh, it's a high modified PMB, but at this time it seems we, are little, we were a little bit too early with this product development. Um, but luckily, we see now more and more interest in this product. So I can tell you I was on the Czech Republic uh, International Conference on Tuesday this week, and there were several presentations from Poland, and they also are using this type of high modified PMB already, and they have already bigger projects done with this uh, product, and more or less they achieved similar results as I will present to you later on. Yeah, high modified PMB, what, what, what kind of product is it and how you can describe it? So I will go through very quickly about what is the current status of the PMB specification, what are the limits, limitations for PMB modification, also here are some limitations for us and also for you in using this product, briefly about test procedures, but I don't have to explain that much because it was already done by, by Anya, thanks to this one, but I will show you some test results, then uh, how you can combine this with asphalt mixture test results, uh, then a short example of how you can calculate the structural lifetime of a pavement road when you apply such a BMB, and then some conclusions at the end. So this standard, I think everybody knows of you, it's the EN14023, it's about PMB modification. You might know also this table. Uh, it's a framework where you can choose the various uh, properties, the various classes for each property. Here I gave an example for a PMB 458065, which is the common product here also in Slovenia, but also in Austria. Uh, yeah, that's the way of how you can describe it. Very simple test methods, you choose the classes and then you're describing the product. The question how the producer come to this uh, specification or to these values is uh, different. There are different methods to achieve uh, the minimum requirements of such a specification. We did this also for the Austrian standard. So that's the Austrian translation of the European standard. And here you see how we describe in Austria our PMB 458065. So the softening point with 65, the force ductility, the highest class already, three, uh, or elastic recovery with 80%, also after aging, 70%. So these are already the highest classes you can choose in this framework. And all other products who are over the, overachieving those classes you can't really currently not properly describe with this uh, current framework. And that's the challenge for us because these high modified PMB, they look, look, look different to the already well-known PMBs. And that's now the challenge for us as a producer. We have a given framework on European level. Everybody's using this one. Uh, but uh, with this framework, we are not really able to describe our product properly and to differentiate it properly if you would apply this standard for a product description. So I was telling you before there were some um, trials already in Poland. They also did a trial in, in, in this specification issue. What you can see here, they call the product 458080. It's more or less the same name as we have for our high modified PMB. But they're also struggling to, to do a proper description of this product because they also can only choose softening point, which is not the proper uh, property to describe such a product as already uh, mentioned by Anja before. So they only can choose the highest class with 80, so which gives you an indication softening point is higher and the product might be higher modified, but this softening point of 80 you can also achieve with other products. So it was mentioned before this wax modified product. So you're easily above 80, 90 if you apply wax, but this has nothing to do with a higher modification as we understand this product. So it's a, you see already the problem what we have to come up with a proper description. Also with the elastic recovery, if you do a PMB high modified, you have an elastic recovery of 9,500. If it's fresh, if you age it, you're still above 90. But with the framework, what we have currently available, we can't describe it. So we can only choose 80, which is equal to the standard product, what, is, what everybody knows. So it's difficult for us, again, to, to differentiate the product properly. And the same problem uh, the, in, was, was seen in, in, in Poland. And that's now, later on, I will show you how we think we might can, uh, or what are proper test protocols for the future to apply on such a product to, be, to, to do a better differentiation. But I mentioned before, there are also some limits of modification. So the first one, so you can't add too much SPS into the product. First, it's, uh, you, you would change from, uh, you would have a phase, trans, uh, a phase transition. So currently we have a, a system which is 
SPS in bitumen. If you would add too much SPS, then you're changing that you have bitumen in the SPS. So that's one thing. Also, the viscosity changing a lot, the more SPS you add in, so then you would have problems in, let's say, pumping the product to the asphalt mixing plant, do a proper mixing, do a proper uh, paving of the road. So there are certain limitations of how much SPS you can add into your PMB. Also, there are some economical limitations because even, well, let's say, we, we would put in 10% or 15%, then the product would become that expensive that nobody will apply this product. So it's a, let's say, a certain optimization of how much SPS you can add in so that it's still technically applicable, so there are still technical benefits and that it's still affordable for the consumer afterwards. So as I already mentioned before, so we did the development of this product in 2011 already. So we gave some presentation in Germany, also together with uh, one of these uh, SPS supplier, Kraton. He also gives some presentations, I think three years ago. He did one presentation here at this colloquium, or four years ago. And there are several test tracks already, also in Europe, already mentioned in Poland. We did some trials already in Austria, a bigger one uh, this autumn on a highway section. But also in Russia, France, they've used this high modified PMB. So we see there is a demand increasing, and I can show you afterwards what is the reason for this one, uh, that this high modified PMB getting more and more interesting uh, for, for the industry. It was mentioned before, a um, CO2 footprint, energy, what is used, so the longer, the long lasting roads become, the more efficient they are, the more sustainable they are, and you can reduce, for example, the CO2 emission, but that's a different story. Um, we talked before, we heard before, complex binder, complex testing. PMB are complex binders, and it's not that easy to describe it only with penetration softening point, so you need other test methods to describe those, uh, these products properly. So there was a publication from Europitium, a position paper already published in 2012 that we have to change here. The way of how we are testing our product, the way of how we are describing the product. And now we see slowly, slowly that they are, that they are implemented in the European standard. It takes a while. It's really a shame for us. <laughs> Somehow that we need the five, 10 years that we review our own product specification, but there are lots of different interests across all Europe, but we are processing and we will come up with new standards uh, which gives us the opportunity to describe those products much better in the future. So here the DSR, I don't have to describe the method itself. Here you see some test results. Let's see if I can use the, the mouse here, just to go there. So you see here the black curve, it's the for 70 per 100. So you see here the G star and then the normal PMB and here you see the G star for the high modified PMB. Not the big difference, but you see a different shape of the curve. Where you see the big difference of this high modified PMB is the phase angle, what you see here. So for, pave, for a normal paving grid bitumen, you see the higher the temperature goes, nearly no elastic re recovery or uh, re elastic response. For PMB, you see here the curve. There's a, a certain plateau at 40, 50, 60 degrees, and then the phase angle is still increasing. And for the highly modified PMB, you still see a very high elastic component in this product in, and this is influencing afterwards the asphalt performance and the asphalt properties of such a product. MSCRT, again, you see these curves before, so I don't have to explain them anymore. But we did then some tests on three different stress levels, so on 0 0.1 kilopascal 1.6 and 3.2 at 60 degrees. And you see here some test results. So for, a, for paving grid bitumen, so very simple answer. You don't have to apply these test methods for paving grid bitumen. It makes no sense. You don't get additional information. Just stay with penetration, softening point. This is still good to give you the first description of this product. But here are the three test stress levels and here are the test results. So you see no elastic recovery. No surprise, this we expected. Everything else would give us a sign that the test method is not the proper one. But now you see for a PMB, 458065, the one what you're using also here in Slovenia. Now you see this 10 cycles of repeating this loading. And you see here already a different shape of this curve what, what, compared to the paving grade bitumen before. Again, the three levels. And here, the test result. So you see here already an elastic respond up to 85% in average for every stressed level. And if you zoom in into this level, into this curve, you see here already the stress is applied and then you see how the product is recovering. Not fully, not 100%, because otherwise you would end up 
here at the starting point, but you see stress is applied, it's recovering 85%, again stress is applied, recovered by 85%, so you see a performance of this product and you can differentiate the different grades quite, quite good. And here you see then the curve for the PMB high modified. Probably somebody has looked at the scale on the left side, so we go here up to 2.5. So here for standard PMB we have four, per, uh, it's going up to four. Uh, again, the three stress levels, and here the elastic recovery is close to 100%. So we are on 96, 97% that this product is recovering. So that's the elastic response of the highly modified product, which is then improving the properties of the asphalt mixture later on. So here again, the same curve, if you zoom in, so you see here, it's nearly recovered to the starting point. So these are test methods which we need that we really, really can differentiate the different PMB products which are out there on the market. So here again, that's the bitumen, 70 per 100, and here's the PMB. If you compare now the two PMB types, again, you see here a clear differentiation. So you, you can't see the differentiation if you would only apply the current EN14023 EN specification. So then we have 80 for the softening point, but the elastic recovery would still stay with 80%, but you see when you apply the MSCRT testing there, that there is a dip, big difference of these two products. And so we need those test protocols to describe these uh, products properly. Uh, yes, and it was mentioned before, that they will come very soon in the, in the European specifications. And I only can recommend, if you have to use this DSR equipment, start already right now with the testing, get familiar with it. So we initiated this year, well, let's say end of last year, a round robin with the six laboratories in, in Austria who have a DSR equipment. We invited also SAC here from, from Slovenia to participate in this round robin, also Ramtech from Croatia and uh, Theo Braunschweig in, in Germany to participate in this round robin test just to see what are the levels of the different laboratories, what, the, what kind of test results they are getting out of this round robin test so that we, let's say, use in the future the same procedure and that we have the same, at the end, the same test results and, and description of the product. And that's very important. We saw, we got already the first test results and I can tell you it's a, a nightmare. Huge different, different results, even they were testing the same product. So there is a lot of work to, to be done that we are lining how the test procedure has to be done. And that's crucial, otherwise you, it makes no sense to introduce uh, uh, such a new test method. So BBR testing, I think everybody of you is familiar with this, was described already a couple of times. Again, only the test results, because that's also, we see here also difference in, 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 the, in the quality of the products. Paving grade bitumen, so you see here the stiffness, thresh values at, at 300 megapascals. We have here a value of minus 19, the same for PMB. The normal PMB, we have here, uh, let's say, minus 23. And if you would go to the high modified PMB, we end up with minus 25. So even here you see an improvement of the highly modified PMB. Not everywhere it's, it's, it's necessary to have this improvement, but with this modification you automatically become a further improvement. So that's about PMB testing. It's nice, it's a first indication what you get, but at the end of the day, what counts is how the performance of the asphalt mix is. So we did also some performance related asphalt mixing testing together with the university in Vienna. So all of them you know, it's the one thing is the low temperature performance, then rutting, and the last one is the stiffness fatigue testing, and here we see then the, the, the high performance of such a product. So again, low temperature performance, so our products, the normal PMB is already a high end product on this uh, performance, so we are achieving minus 35 degrees for a wearing curse, and the same applies for, for the high modified PMB. So uh, permanent deformation, we are using the triaxial cyclic compression test in Austria. You see here some test results for an SMA. The green one is the one for PMB high modified, so you don't see here really the big difference at this testing uh, criteria what were applied. Where you see a big difference of this high modified PMB is for an, an AC22, a binder, which you use as a middle layer, and you see here a much better permanent deformation performance of this product here with a standard PMB, which is already good at the, at the creep rate of 0 0.36, and for a high modified, you're already down on 0 0.27, and this was not optimized, so even here is still a potential to further improve 
this asphalt mixture, but here you see already the advantage, advantage of this high modified PMB. But the real big advantage you see on, on the stiffness or on the fatigue behavior, so the blue curve is typical for a PMB 45, 80, 65, what we use in Austria, and the red one is for this high modified PMB, and you see here now they allowed maximum load cycles, uh, and it's more or less triple, uh, if for standard PMB 0 0.5, and with the high modified you have 3 .3 million load cycles, so it's a much, a significant improvement, still it's not reflecting the reality, but nevertheless you see out of the test which you are performing a huge difference between a standard PMB which has already a good performance on fatigue, but with this high modified PMB you even can yeah, further improve, significantly improve this fatigue behavior, which is really relevant if you're talking about sustainable road construction. So imagine you put this in, a, in the base layer or in the binder layer, what will be the lifetime of such a road? And this was also a question we were asking us, and again with the university together, we did um, some uh, pavement design. I think uh, Ronald Blab will talk about this process and procedure later on in the afternoon. So that's the, the, the structure what we have taken into consideration. So it's 11 centimeter base curse, 8.5 binder curse, 3.5 centimeter wearing curse, and, um, and uh, we did a variation of different bitumen. So we used paving grade bitumen, we used standard PMB, and we used uh, PMB with RC, and we used the high modified PMB, and then we did some pavement design and uh, were curious what will be the, the theoretical, theoretical lifetime or what is the amount, the maximum amount of allowed load cycles out of this calculation, and this was the result. So different uh, uh, variants what we calculated. So the first one, is for, if you would use in this structure, purely 70 per 100 bitumen. So then you end up with, let's say, 11 million load cycles, what you can, what you can apply on this uh, pavement structure. So if you go further, sorry for wrong direction. So that's an example for, if you would use only a PMB 45, 80, 65. So you see here already a significant increase of the maximum allowed load cycles, let's say starting from 10, 11 million, you are doubling the maximum allowed load cycle, so you go up to 22 million load cycles. So it's a significant improvement of the lifetime of such a, a pavement structure. So again, think back on, on sustainability, CO2 emission, and so on and so forth, how we use our resources. So this would be a significant improve. And in Austria, Asfenak is using on all three layers PMB, different types of PMB, but they already did this decision a couple of years ago on highways, only PMB on all three layers, just to have this improvement of the, of the performance of the road. And now let's go further. So that's a product, if you would add 20% uh, reclaimed asphalt with a specific, specifically designed RC PMB product, same results or even better. And the last one is the one for high modified PMB. So again, a further improvement. So from 22 million, you come up to 30 million load cycles. So it's again a further significant improvement step if you use such kind of of PMB, and I got yesterday some results from a laboratory from US. We did some, some tests there as well, and the result was they do it slightly different, so they use also the MSCRT testing, and depending on the results, they do some categorizing of the speed tumor for which, uh, how many load cycles you can apply on such a product, and also they more or less achieve the result of more than 30 million load cycles you can apply if you would use a PMB high modified product. So it's again more or less proven from different uh, sources that this high modified PMB is really improving the whole performance of a road and of a product. So this is then about uh, theoretical lifetime, more or less the same test results. I will skip this very quickly because it's not adding too much more information. So what we will do now in the future, or what is the summary of this presentation today? So first of all, get familiar with more complex binder testing. This will be necessary for the future, you see more and more different modifications, and if you would like to understand the product, you have to do new tests. So you can't survive with purely penetration softening point. Ring a bolt, that's no longer applicable for such products. Do some, try to get uh, in contact with laboratories who are already familiar, because that's saving a lot of time for you and a lot of costs for you. So try to participate in round robbing to, to, to improve your testing protocols. All these test results you can use then afterwards as an input for pay, road pavement design. Uh, already referred to um, Ronald Blab for his afternoon session. 
He will explain it how you can use these test results. You should do also some uh, performance-related asphalt testing, really to see how the asphalt mix performs afterwards. And also here, you saw the good test results of this uh, uh, product. And I think for the future, it will become crucial, really, to do proper road designing and also life cycle costs inventory. It's also necessary because we can't spend our money without doing further analysis, and we should do it very clever. And uh, we have started now a further research project, I already mentioned now in, in October, this product was used on a highway in Austria. We took a lot of asphalt samples and we are now in contact again with the University in Vienna, with Braunschweig and with the University in Czech Republic. So they will do again the bitumen testing and also their asphalt, uh, performance related asphalt testing in Austria, in Czech Republic and Germany. They will do afterwards some pavement design with the results they achieve out of it to see first what is the difference between the three countries, but really also for us very important to see what is really the performance of our product and what we can expect from such a project for the future. So thanks, I hope I met the time. If you have some, qu some questions, just <laughs> ask them or ask me in the, in the break afterwards. Thank you. Yeah.